If you've ever wondered what is it like to work with a coach one-on-one, and there are coaches in every area of life right now, financial, you can have a speech coach, you can have a TEDx talk coach, you could have an organization coach for your house, you can have a health coach, functional health coach, you could have a personal training meaning fitness coach. You could have a menopause fitness specialist coach. And I'm asked very frequently if I still do private sessions and if I have my coaching client process still in place. And the answer is I do. And I'm going to give you a sneak peek into what it feels like to be a coaching client so that you can take these questions that I ask clients when we start working together. And let me tell you, there's a whole batch that I ask before we begin working together. So applying to start and starting doesn't mean for sure we're going to continue to work together because there are times where I know I'm not the right match and may not be what someone needs at the moment. And I am not shy about saying so, so that whoever I might be working with can move on and get the support that they really need for taking the best next steps. So I'm going to give you here what it is after that screening process has happened. What are the questions that I first ask? And if you've read, you still got it, girl, the after 50 fitness formula for women, you know, a lot of these questions, you know, them from chapter by chapter, we go through the nutrition, the exercise, the stress, the recovery time you're beginning between exercise and how you're doing that, the collective hormone integration. So it's called the holistic hormone viewpoint, pulling all of it in together. We talk about sleep. There are questions throughout that book and information that kind of gets you there. But if it's been a minute, that book is not new. It's gosh, almost seven years old now. This will give you the insight to maybe answer these questions for yourself. So of course, I can't hear your responses. It's a one-way response or conversation. But I think if you really want to go through this as you're walking or driving and you can let your mind really answer these questions, you may want to push pause and really work yourself through the answer before you just move on. Because I'm going to give you some of these rapid fire. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top struggles and concerns. But most of all, we're hoping we inspire you to change the way you think about aging so you can actually change the actions you take toward doing just that. I share what to eat, how to move, and how to change your mindset, sometimes about the two former mentioned so that you can have the energy and vitality that you want, need, and deserve in this second and better half. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening. Whether this is your first time or this is your thousand, well, that's a mouthful, time listening. We, some point back in April, we were so busy, we didn't even notice. We crossed the 2 million download threshold with this show alone. By the way, if you're listening and you're a health coach or fitness pro, there's one just for you, especially if you're a female serving other females. There's a lot of content on how do you grow your business, especially if the world turned upside down for many of us. For many, it was good. For those of you who were maybe studio owners inside a gym trying to train out of it, and now the struggle is to be heard and found. And if that's you, she means fitness business is just for you. But thank you, no matter where you're listening. And we uh, love to hear from you. So I will put that after the show notes. It's always a call and I'm not just saying it. So let's dive in here. So this is about my coaching client process. And, you know, I have looked at what I'm doing and I'm reframing it right now. 
I've had to guard my time in these last, you know, nine years to start and to grow and manage a team where we not only offer the first only exclusively made for menopause fitness membership in the world, but I train trainers and health coaches and do masterminds with them so that more women have optimal choices for the way they want to train and learn. And I've only had time to coach a handful of clients along the way. I'm changing the way I coach to include a combination of private and group coaching sessions weekly. So there's actually more touch, more connection with me, more accountability, but in less time weekly. So instead of it being just a one-time fix of a 50-minute session, it is uh, three opportunities, one-on-one and two in a group to connect. You have access to workouts, workout protocols, and can use both private and group sessions to have your questions answered without waiting another seven days. So I, I will still have a few private slots for women who want complete anonymity. And I got to tell you, that word is really hard for me, no matter what. <laughs> and one-on-one. So please don't give me a pronunciation. I get it. It's it's just tough. But as I coach more trainers and become more aware of the value of community, I'm really pointed in this direction with a shift. So for details, if that appeals to you, just message me here at the show and uh, you can be the first to know about the next group enrollment. And there's a content like this, right? There's podcasts, there's blogs, there's videos going out to social media. And this content is where if you show up, my intent is that no matter what your intention is, maybe it's simply to stop for a few tips that you can use yourself or that maybe you want the structure of a next step and science-based proven steps, you will benefit from every podcast, blog, or video that's available for free if that was all you ever did. That is my intention. So I would love the confirmation from anyone that you get something out of every episode and whether that's reinforcement, confirmation that what you knew, thought is true or that you learn something new or a new frame about thinking. So there are thousands of pieces of free content. It makes me go a little bonkers. I have to tell you when I have somebody stop in on a social media site saying, it feels like you're selling all the time. And you know, we are a business. They're business accounts. However, there's a whole lot of every bit of information I share in a program is out there for free. To the person who can pull that together is all there for the taking. I don't hold anything back. There's no reason because it's out there in research for you to find as well. So everything I teach in my programs, and I have no problem telling you that, it's out there in those free offers. And if you can organize it, put it in the right sequence and use it at the right time for yourself, it's congrats. It's okay. So no matter who you are, I know some of us, and I'm one of those, there are areas where, okay, I know I could research this, like, you know, and organize it and learn how to do something from a YouTube video, but I really want it in order. I want to know the criteria for moving on versus not moving on. And sometimes I too, I need to pay for the program in order to stay accountable. And and I think each of us has those areas where that's true for us. So no matter who you are, thanks for listening. Hope every piece of content is valuable and, and it is a part of the next step on whatever your journey is. I create these pieces of content in the early mornings. So last thing I want to say before we dive in, this morning is my favorite time of day. And I don't let many people into these moments. Even my family knows that. Like if I have company, like I will, you know, pad out in my slips and (laughs) make a cup of mashta and then pad back to my room and say, I'll I'll see you guys later, right? And I spend a couple hours working. So know that you are a favorite part of my day. Insiders, 
This podcast is a little like private coaching. So in it, I'm going to talk about what I'd ask and why, what I'd learn about you from the response and why you want to answer these questions for yourself to consider a next best step in your own journey. Again, whether you apply it for yourself or you do something else, maybe with me or anywhere. So here are my coaching client questions. Diving right in. How well are you sleeping? How is your digestion and elimination? What does a typical day of eating and drinking look like for you? How much protein are you eating in a day? What's the source of that protein? And what is the timing of these meals with exercise and with sleep? So I love to have a snapshot of here's my day, here's what time I got up, time I'm eating, drinking, exercising, what it is specifically tells me a lot. Are you aware of your food tolerances and blood sugar responses to different foods? Describe your last two weeks of exercise. What does that look like? When you lift weights, how hard would you say that you work? How often are you lifting? Do you do any interval training? And of course, I'd probably ask a follow-up question. Describe it to me. How how hard are you working when you're doing that interval training? And for how long? And how many times a week are you doing that? Then I'd ask, do you like to track your steps or your sleep? Or are you tracking macronutrients or, or any else, anything else? What are you tracking? Are you working right now currently with a physician, a functional doctor, a naturopath? Tell me who's on this allied health team of yours right now. Have you tested? Tested micronutrients, tested hormones, tested your thyroid, tested your poop, basically. Um, any, Any of those come into play. Are you taking HRT or bioidentical HRT? Are you considering it, interested, curious about it? Do you want to have a discussion about how it could help exercise results or impact your exercise results? And right now, what's happening in your life, your relationships, your work that you want to share? So I have some insight about your other sources, your collective or what we call allostatic load of stress. Okay. So now if you've gone through all those, really, again, that was a lot. I don't have numbers on these, but I encourage you to maybe back up and push pause at the end of each one of those and answer, you know, in your head or out loud if you're out for a walk and nobody's going to look at you strangely. But then again, if they do, who cares? Um, and then push play again, listen to the next question and answer them that way. So as you might imagine, when you're actually in a conversation, you know, it doesn't go quite this smoothly. So I would ask those questions and then there's probably an offshoot question. And I might need to say, say, say some more about that or ask a follow-up. And so do that for yourself. Think of yourself as a bit of a detective in doing this. What do I learn? curious about that. So what is it that I'm going to learn about my coaching client if I ask these questions? Each of them that I ask a coaching client and that I train are flipping 50 menopause fitness specialists to ask and respond to in order to gather the right information that will determine the highest priority first step for us. No matter what your outcome is, I can't immediately give you, oh, this exercise or this way of training, like doing HIT is all the bomb. And you'll find, I'm going to guess, that in past experiences you might have had with personal trainers, especially if it was that you're a brand new member, you get a free personal training session, they may have given you some real quick tips and said, here's what you need based on wanting to lose weight. Okay, here's what you need to do. That I don't believe is going to work anymore. And not not just for women in menopause. I don't think it works for anybody, not if you're truly personal in the training, right? So we need to have things that we line up 
a program. So let's talk about this. So a program or that rapid fire answer from a trainer, oh, you want weight loss? Here's what you need to do. That leads a group of people through a fairly set step-by-step, even though it might be a blueprint like the After 50 Fitness Formula for Women course or the Food Flip that is in addition, if you want it, to our stronger 12-week program, it's based on a group of women in menopause, not an individual. And we each have a different journey through menopause. So of course, one-on-one is definitely more custom. It's focused on you. What we're looking at in general is based on some very key things. There are new emergence studies that, unfortunately, I want to make really clear with what I'm about to share. There are two references here that I'm about to dive into, and this is kind of explaining the basis of what I'm sharing in two studies that could have been pulled from any 200 of them. When you look at Hot Not Bothered, my book, and You Still Got It, Carl, the resources in those are, there are many, many, many. (laughs) And there are more studies coming out, gratefully, right? That were 2020 was pretty quiet because of the pandemic. 2021, a few more studies. 2022, we're seeing a few more, but sometimes the first run of those studies is on mice. That's not all that helpful. So in letting you know here, usually I do share studies only featuring women in menopause as the subjects. Two studies I'm sharing here, one from 2022 is that indeed, but the other one is is, uh, uh, from 2021, so still fairly recent, and yet it's on my. So can we say, oh, it's going to apply? Not necessarily, but I am going to go over it because there have been other studies prior to it that have suggested kind of like-minded concepts and theories or hypotheses. So many of you listening are show it to me girls. And what I mean by that is like, prove it to me. Like, where's the science? Where's the science? And I love that you demand and ask that. But what I'm doing is I'm putting it in the show notes. I'll put a couple links, but you have access to PubMed just as easily as I do. There's there's no lock on key on that, right? Now, I may belong to a couple of professional memberships that give me access to peer-reviewed journals specifically in regard to fitness and, and pay for some additional ones that I get the research. But what is most important is that you're able to read it and you know how to interpret a study and you know what is a qualified, really a good study. So some of these smaller studies that first come out with women in menopause, you know, if there's only 25 participants, that is really hard to say, hmm, is that going to apply to all of us? But we love to see at least a thousand and the bigger the group, the better. But those small studies are kind of a start or a pilot or beta that suggests here's where this needs to go. So they also have to be there. They do have some value, but you don't want to put all your eggs in the basket that had 12 participants in it. So just just want to make sure that you're on the same page there. If you're unsure about reading, interpreting studies, reach out to me because it's a great conversation for our Facebook Insiders group. I'll put the link in the show notes for that. But if you go to Facebook and you just look up Flipping Five Zero Insiders, that's it. You don't have to be a part of a program to access that. And in fact, it's better if you're not part of a program because it gets confusing when people are asking about their programs there. All right, let's talk about the metabolic effects of menopause, what it is that I'm gleaning from all of those questions that help me and what we know is the foundation as a coach. So between pre, think pre-menopause, that's before you're actually going through fluctuations in perimenopause. And in many women don't know, like, where's this point? But you're still in those reproductive years. For some women, this is a crash course because you know probably a woman in her mid or late 40s who's had a baby. But is she in perimenopause? Hell yeah. So she's pregnant, she's postnatal, and then she's, you know, in perimenopause as well. 
And, you know, she may still decide, oh, I want more children. I'm going to do fertility. And so I'm going through a lot of these things all at once. That gets complicated. For the rest of us, not so much, right? But at some point you were pre-menopause, then you were in perimenopause, things fluctuated, changed for you, and you hit menopause that 12 months from your last period, and then you go immediately, you're post-menopause. Body composition in looking at women was better, looking overall at a collective group pre, and then it progressively increased relative to the journey. So women in postmenopause had the the worse, if you want to say that. That's not a great terminology, right? But the worse body composition. So it was better pre and then progressively got worse. Trained to changes in body composition, meaning body fat increases were most dramatic during perimenopause. So it's it's in that time when maybe your period is fluctuating, when you are experiencing some of those signs and symptoms. The first one might just be weight loss resistance. Your exercise isn't working, a little bit more fatigue, could be hot flashes, night sweats. They may not even be present for you. That led researchers to conclude that if you're in perimenopause and you know it, and you can probably say if you're in your 40s and or early 50s not reaching menopause yet, you're probably in perimenopause. That is the best time to start exercising if you are not. And let me get more specific. It is the best time to get specific with the kind of exercise you need to be doing. We've got to ditch this. Something is better than nothing. Because the something, if you go all in, you go to a a seven-day-a-week boot camp and you're already in fatigue and your hormones are already in fluctuation, that could actually be worse, more detrimental. So we really want to look at the best thing to do for the exercise. Look at starting now if you're not doing something. So if you're in post-menopause and you're thinking, oh, shoot, it's too late. No, start now. But we need to talk about fat oxidation. What allows the release of fat for use of energy was reduced in those perimenopause women and in the postmenopause women. So the, the time to offset it with training, specifically strength training, is in perimenopause if possible, right? And if you didn't, again, now in postmenopause. In previous content, I've shared that women tend to burn more fat for fuel compared to men during exercise. Anyway, we're already set for it, but that will decline. And that is especially true if your stress level is preventing fat burning. Very important that you remove the stress or deal with the stress before you begin to say, okay, well, I'm going to do this fat burning exercise because your body and stress won't, won't go there for you. Here's what the study that involved mice found. Surges of estrogen jumpstart us to be more active. So if you're premenopause, you still have quite a bit of estrogen. If you're in perimenopause, you're roller coastering up and down. You have higher estrogen levels, you're still cycling, and then you have periods of time when it's lower. You're more likely to be more active during those times of the month, for instance, when you have more estrogen. And um, for most of us, that's during our first couple of weeks in a cycle. The last couple of weeks, we tend to get a little bit more sluggish and maybe more rest would actually be better for us. It's also been found that we have fewer pleasure receptors in response to exercise. So if you are used to you know, being that regular person, you were very active and loved it and always got that high and feel good. And now you're not quite as active and you don't know where you kind of fell off the bandwagon. Part of it may be that you don't get the same hit. It's almost like cocaine, right? You have to escalate the amount you're going to take and you need a bigger dose to do the same job. And that even won't do it. It's that like musical chairs, you have fewer receptors for the feel good hormones during exercise. So I shared that during a previous masterclass, and I think it may have been earlier this year. So I don't have the exact study. I have the exact science still in my head. 
And that helps solve a problem for a lot of people when they feel like I'm not motivated anymore. How do you get and stay motivated? There's a reason for it. I mean, it's, we need to find ways around it. More pleasure, meaning doing it with somebody you like or love, listening to music that you like or love, doing exercise choices that you like or love. I mean, maybe that high intensity interval training on the treadmill is not your jam anymore, and maybe you need to get outside in nature and that would be better for you. You know, and that's not everybody. So you may love, you know, just killing it on the treadmill for 30 minutes and being done. You've got to really define that for yourself. That is so, so important. So here's what we know about women who do gain weight after menopause. And I will say that for my coaching clients, it's not always about weight gain. It's about energy oftentimes. And I do think that probably a larger percent of the time it's weight gain, wanting to lose weight, as well as wanting to age better, have more muscle tone, feel more confident, more libido as we start to uncover things. But not every one of you wants to lose weight or needs to lose weight. And that's not always the reason for coaching. And it, honestly, we try to shift the focus away from that, even though that may be the outcome you have. The more you focus on wanting to lose weight, the less likely comes to you. The more we focus on the things, the actions that will lead you to that, the better your results will be hands down. This is what women who do gain weight after menopause have in common. They share these things. They either exercise less than they were prior to menopause or they're overtraining. And your definition of overtraining is probably different than anyone else's. What would qualify as overtraining for you right now may not be anything close to what that would have been 10 years ago. You may just not have quite as much tolerance for exercise as you do now. Poor sleep quality or quantity are also common denominators among those who gain weight. Sometimes that is where I start with a client. Every decision, every way and time that we exercise is about getting better sleep because if that doesn't fall into place, we don't have the right hormones lined up to actually get better. I'll share a link to one of the top um, freebies, if you will, that I share with people just to, I mean, go down this checklist. If you think you've tried everything, let's go try them sequentially and try these things that you may or may not have tried before. So backing up just a review, the women who tend to gain weight tend to either exercise less than they were pre or they're overtraining for their stress status right now. They have poor sleep quality or quantity. They consume too few. That's usually it, more than too many. Too few calories overall, too little protein or not enough carbohydrate or not at the right time anyway to help them gain lean muscle. They have diets that are high in sugar wine or alcohol specifically, or even just eating too much fruit or treats at the wrong time. Now, watermelon and cherries, for instance, high micronutrient density, but also high in sugar. So if you in the middle of the morning or middle of the afternoon, when you're hungry, your blood sugar is probably lower after, you know, three, four hours after a meal, if you have just fruit at that time, you may spike your blood sugar levels. So a way to test that is using a continuous blood glucose module. And no, you don't have to have a prescription. So I will share a link with you also in the show notes so that you can do that. A month of insight can be golden, especially if you're working on losing the spare tire or losing the bra fat. Those things don't come from doing an exercise for that area. They come from getting your blood sugar and your insulin levels in control. Other things women share in common if they're gaining weight, inflammatory food consumption. So, you know, not everybody loves to hear this, but, you know, identifying whether dairy is inflammatory for you. And especially if you've got an autoimmune disease, it's something to look at. So inflammatory foods also include wheat and gluten, can include eggs, and there's a few more that you want to be conscious of. 
they don't do strength training with the intent to gain lean muscle tissue. Now, they may say, check in that box, I do strength training, but it may not be specific enough to their needs. It may not be working major muscle groups each to fatigue. It may be more collective. This is a total body exercise because I'm doing a squat and then a press and then a, you know, a hinge over here and a rotation. You know, and there's a difference between is that going to help mobility and movement and function? Yes, it may. However, if you're really wanting to boost your metabolism, you also need very specifically to reach muscle fatigue in your major muscle groups in order to do that. So there's a place for both in a program and it doesn't expand the time commitment dramatically. And that's it. So what I'm doing is digging in to learn whether based on life circumstance, hormone status, and I don't require a lab if signs and symptoms are pointing clearly to what's going on. That is very obvious to a trained menopause fitness specialist. The training and the lifestyle habits that are going to improve results for an individual client become very clear. And you should have a lot of clues now as to your answers to those questions that I need that may not have ever been a pool of questions asked to you by a personal trainer. And it should be because any exercise alone can't in isolation be the answer. If you have questions and or you want to share your answers, I can't do one-on-one coaching with you without a coach and client relationship. But this was my best effort at helping you feel like you and I were on the phone or on a Zoom having a one-on-one conversation. So I'd love to hear from you. I will list the references that I've included here, the studies, and also include other resources. The Stronger Tone and Define program, as I'm doing this right now and releasing it, is open for enrollment. We start July 1st. We start every quarter, and there's usually some in some nuance that happens with open enrollment. There may be some incentive prizes happening for the current course. There may be some bonuses if you got in early, but the best time to start in to get in is as early as possible during that registration process because we reward early action takers because you and I can procrastinate way too much. So I also mentioned sleep yourself skinny. So if you want to just tackle, here's how I will get better sleep. That little freebie will be here, the link to it. And my link for continuous blood glucose monitor. I've done it two different months now, split them up. So I did one in February, did one during the course of my move from April through May and learned different things, applied different strategies, and I'm getting far better results just from having done it. And I will probably do it again, you know, especially after a period of stress to look at what's going on. So if you're interested, those things will all be in the show notes. You'll find those at flipping50.com forward slash my coaching client. What are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 today.